my writing partner in crime, the incredibly talented Mel Chiavuka. I like a sequin on a Tuesday. I drew some boobs in this for your entertainment, because I'm really mature. Um, okay. So this isn't really a story as such. It's like a bit of a dramatic reading and a bit of a critique and a bit of something else. Um, I'm going to start with the dramatic reading from one of my favorite lyricists. Well, I remember every little thing as if it happened only yesterday. Parking by the lake and there was not another car in sight. And I never had a girl looking any better than you did. And all the kids at school, they were wishing they were me that night. So that's Meatloaf. <laughs> uh, that's Paradise by the Dashboard Lights, which was my favourite song when I was like eight years old. I was absolutely obsessed with meatloaf. Um, probably not a normal thing for an eight year old to like, but hey. Uh, so I had a cassette at, at like a Sony Walkman, I taped it onto cassette tape like over and over again so I could just listen to it on repeat. Uh, so although I'm reading these lyrics, I actually know them off my heart, I'm just pretending not to know them. <laughs> so, I hadn't listened to Paradise by the Dashboard Light for quite a long time, apart from trying to avoid it at karaoke nights. So I listened to it more recently and thought, oh, actually, it's a little bit problematic now, um, because, you know, feminism has ruined everything for me, so yay. <laughs> so if you're not familiar with Paradise by the Dashboard Light, I am just going to break it down anyway, uh, and we're going to go through it sort of line by line. Well, not all the lines, because it's really long. Um, so it's a three-part duet. It's actually eight minutes long, just over eight minutes long. It's Meatloaf and a girl who's probably way hotter than him, probably out of his league. Um, they, in part one, they are in the car. They say they're barely 17 and they're barely dressed. Um, they say their bodies are oh, so close and tight. And then there's a whole bit about glowing, like the metal on the edge of a knife, which makes no sense. Um, the meatloaf is singing, I can see paradise by the dashboard light, which basically means fuck yeah, I'm going to get laid. Um, then we go on to part two and it goes to, we're going to go all the way to now, we're going to go all the way to now, and all that kind of stuff. And then there's this sexy slap bass and all this like, oh yeah, in the car. And they're really like, you know, getting down to it. And there's this weird baseball commentary over the top going, holy cow, I think he's going to make it. And then she goes, stop right there, I got to know right now. <laughs> I'm not going to sing anymore, that's the end of it. And then she says, back to dramatic reading. Before we go any further, do you love me? Will you love me forever? Do you need me? Will you never leave me? Will you make me so happy for the rest of my life? Will you take me away? Will you make me a wife? I've got to know right now. <laughs> That's a bit much. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, uh, um, uh, let me sleep on it, baby, baby, let me sleep on it. And it goes on like that for a long time until they're basically just screaming at each other. And then he says, I couldn't take it any longer. Lord, I was crazy when the feeling came upon me like a tidal wave. Started swearing to my God and on my mother's grave that I would love you till the end of time. Meaning that he just said he'd marry her so that he could get her pants. <laughs> so part three is the finale of the song and um, it's going, so now I'm praying for the end of time to hurry up and arrive, because if I've got to spend another minute with you, I don't think that I can really survive. <laughs> How lovely. Bloody women tricking men into marrying them. So it won't surprise you to know that Meatloaf's actually been married and divorced twice. Um, and of course it's had all the classics like, like a bat out of hell, I'll be gone when the morning comes. Um, and so the song ends with the lovely, praying for the end of time so I can end my time with you. Uh, so I've decided to um, rewrite a few bits of the lyrics, uh, not to really make it romantic because you know romance is bullshit and all that, but um, just to, to maybe like modernise it, take out a little bit of um, the crazy psycho girlfriend thing and, and, and patriarchal bullshit. So, so from where she says, stop right there, I gotta know right now, have you got a condom? <laughs> and he says, uh, la, 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 let me look in my wallet. Baby, baby, let me look in my wallet. And she says, I'm getting it right now. 
because contraception is really important even if you're on a pill or you have a coil or you have an implant, it's still really important to use a condom. And he says, uh, 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 let me find it. Oh, here it is. It's from 1976, so I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> Which actually is fine because the song was written in 1976. So <laughs> <laughs> and she says, I gotta go right now. Do you actually respect me or are you going to try and take pictures of my badge or something between your mates or are you going to jizz on my car seats or are you going to jizz on my face? <laughs> and he says, no. Uh, let me let me think about it. Of course, I respect you. And are you sure you want to carry on with all the sex? Because clear consent is really very important. And she says, yes, I really do want to do all the sex. Thank you so much for checking. And instead of singing for the whole eight minutes, instead they just shag all over the car and uh, on the back seats, on the front seats, and on the bonnet and in the boot. <laughs> and then they end the song um, by saying. We're not praying for the end of time to hurry up and arrive because we both have lots of great consensual sex and now we just use Tinder to survive. <laughs> the end.